Hi everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our science discovery episode for today, we will be learning valence electrons. So let's get started. Our topic for today is about valence electrons. So what is a valence electron or valence electrons? Valence electrons are the electrons in the outer shell that bond with other atoms. So for example, we have here boron, silicon, and antimony. You have these dots outside are the electrons that we call. However, for boron, there are one, two, three electrons on the outermost orbit. Therefore, boron has three valence electrons. Silicon, on the other hand, will have one, two, three, four valence electrons, while antimony will have one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. So when we say valence electrons, these are the electrons in the outer shell that are ready to bond with other atoms. The electrons on the inside is what we call the core electrons. That means that these electrons are not to interact or bond with other atoms. The number of valence electrons determines an element's chemical properties. So for example, we have your noble gases. Your noble gases are the ones on the right side of your periodic table. These are also called inert gases. What is inert? Inert means they do not react with other atoms. So the noble gases are inert because they have already eight electrons on its outermost shell. Having eight outer shell electrons, all right, means that all the shells is full and therefore they cannot react with another atom because they have completed all the necessary or required electrons on its shells in the outermost and the required is eight now your columns on your periodic table is what we call our groups Elements in the same group have similar chemical properties. Why is it so? That is because each group has the same number of valence electrons. So here we have group 1A followed by 2A, followed by 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and then you have your 8a so which means that in your periodic table since this is group 1a the elements in your periodic table are arranged in groups and each group has the same number of valence electron so group 1a will have one valence electron group 2a will have two valence electron group 3a will have three and so on and so forth and your group 8 will have eight valence electrons except for helium which has only two that means your inert gases or noble gases has completed all the shells or full with the required eight electrons on its outermost the entire periodic table is arranged according to the number of valence electron the reason they are arranged is that in this way elements in each group will react similarly therefore they will have similar properties the octet rule states that atoms like to have eight valence electrons as i have mentioned atoms that has eight outer shell electrons are stable and non-reactive so that means that only the noble gases will have these eight electrons. 
therefore the rest will be reactive. How do we represent the valence electrons in terms of structure? We call it the Lewis dot structure. The Lewis structure only shows the valence electrons. So for example, for this oxygen, oxygen is in group 6A. Therefore, we would see six valence electrons. So how do we draw it? When you have your oxygen, it's like a box. You just need to have it on four sides. So that means you have one, you have to complete one complete rotation, that's four, and then followed by five, and then six. That means that you have here an electron and electron. In each shell, for it to be full, it has to have two electrons. So for this case, if you look at it, this is already full. This is full. This shell needs one more. This shell needs another one. Therefore, for your oxygen to have a complete eight electrons, it needs to accept two electrons for it to have a complete eight. For sodium, it has only one. Therefore, sodium can either accept seven or just release this one electron because these electrons requires a certain amount of energy. Each electron transfer or each electron being received requires a certain amount of energy. So for you to accept seven electrons, that requires that much amount of seven electrons energy. Therefore, it's easier to remove one electron. However, since we're only talking about Lewis structure, we will discuss the transfer and acceptance of electrons on another video. So for this case, Na, which is in group 1A, will have one dot outside. Be, or beryllium, which is in group 2A, will have two dots outside. Oxygen, which is in group 6A, will have six dots. And if you have chlorine, which is on 7A, will have seven dots. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's try the following. You are asked to determine the element's number of valence electrons and its Lewis dot structure. So for fluorine, fluorine is in 7A group. Therefore, fluorine will have seven valence electrons. Phosphorus, on the other hand, is in the fifth group or group 5A. Therefore, phosphorus will have five valence electrons. Calcium, on the other hand, is in group 2A. Therefore, you will have two valence electrons. Nitrogen is on group 5A. Therefore, nitrogen will also have five electrons. Lithium is on group 1A. Therefore, it will have one. Zinc, on the other hand, will be, where do you think will zinc be? Can you tell me what is the valence electron for zinc? That is right. The valence electrons for zinc will be two. How about carbon? Can you tell me how many valence electrons carbon will have? That is correct. Carbon will have four valence electrons. How about iodine? Can you tell me how many valence electrons iodine will have? That is correct. Iodine will have seven valence electrons. So if you are asked to write this or draw this in a Lewis dot structure, fluorine, which is an F, will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lithium, which is only one, will have one. Carbon, on the other hand, will have one, two, three, four. 
I hope that you have learned something today and if you're new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our science discoveries. Bye!